Let's get straight to the point. You are a do-it-yourselfer who is trying to decide if you have the budget and skill set to put together a small solar backup power system for your home. I've been down this exact same road and let me tell you, you can. However, if you've already done some research on the web, you've discovered what I did. YouTube has lots of how to make your own solar panel videos. Then there's also companies that sell these solar power backup kits that cost anywhere from six to ten thousand dollars. There are also a few guys that built some smaller solar backup systems for their homes. But they just show you a quick video or a few pictures of what their systems look like. They never give clear step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. And many of these guys aren't even following the current National Electric Code. Look, I'm a professional electronics engineer for the Department of Defense and I have worked on portable solar power systems for the military. And I'm not going to build something that isn't up to safety standards and neither should you. Here's the bottom line. After working on remote solar applications for the military, I decided to build a simple system for my home that could provide continuous power. I'm talking months of continuous power to run essential household appliances like a compact refrigerator, a medium-sized chest freezer, the occasional use of a microwave, power tools, the occasional use of a light or two in the evening, of course using LED or fluorescent bulbs, and even my washing machine running only cold cycles. And this system had to follow the National Electric Code. Safety is not an option. I have a family and a home and I'm not about to cut corners just to save a few dollars. But could I really design a system that could accomplish all this for only around $2,500? Yes I could and yes I did. It has been nine months in the making, but I finally completed my simple, safe solar design, which includes a complete system diagram and specification, complete parts list, and an energy conservation guide. All these resources I have made freely available on my website for the do-it-yourself solar community to use as a resource. Along with developing these free resources, I also spent hundreds of hours producing a DVD with over two hours of step-by-step -step instructional video that detail everything you need to do to build the system and safely operate it. I did this because many do-it-yourself people may look at the system diagram and think it's too complicated for them to wire up. Well, it's not. My do-it-yourself DVD will walk you through every step. There are no special tools required, just the basics. Like wire cutters, a utility knife, a hammer, some screwdrivers, a wrench, a drill. The most specialized tool you'll need is a stake pounder, which you'll use to pound in the ground rod. Trust me, if you have ever replaced a battery on your car, then you can follow the instructions on this DVD no problem. And just to build your confidence, here are a few snapshots from the DVD. Let's begin working on our solar panel combiner box. We're going to need three items. First, the combiner box from Midnight Solar Incorporated. Secondly, the ground fault protection device, also from Midnight Solar Incorporated. And then we're going to need a few inches of the outdoor 10 gauge two conductor cable. Now that we've removed about half an inch of skin from the end of the white wire coming from the top of the GFP device, let's go ahead and loosen the screw that's on the top of the PV negative bus bar. Connect the negative terminal of battery 1 with the positive terminal of battery 2. Then connect the negative terminal of battery 3 with the positive terminal of battery 4. We're going four. from the negative terminal on battery 1 to the positive terminal on battery two. And let's tighten down our wing nuts on both terminals. Okay, let's do the same thing on battery three and four. And let's go ahead and insert the red zero gauge power cable coming from our power cable assembly, replace the washer 
lock washer and nut. Now that everything has been double checked, let's go ahead and turn on the power switch on the inverter. Okay, looks like the green overload light is on, which means everything is working correctly. Another window will open and we'll see the solar panel data sheet. Focus on the standard test conditions section. And we want to verify that the minimum power is 205 watts. The voltage, or the VMPP, is in the 28 volt range, which it is. Simple enough? Absolutely. Let me say one last thing. I spent a lot of time on this project and so I need to charge a little bit for my sweat and tears. As I said before, my complete design and parts list are available for free on my website for those do-it-yourselfers who already have plenty of electrical wiring and safety circuitry experience. And the DVD is also available for purchase at a reasonable price via the PayPal Buy Now button on my website. And you don't need a PayPal account. The standard credit card ordering form is available as well. If you have any comments or questions, please email me at solardvd at hotmail.com. Since I'm an engineer by day and a busy husband and father at night, I can't promise a quick response, but I will do my best. There is no good reason why the average do-it-yourselfer on a budget can't build their own solar backup power system to keep their home running even during the longest power outages. With that in mind, I highly encourage you to post this video link on other solar do-it-yourself websites and spread the word about the Simple Safe Solar Project.